All right, Terry, it's on you. I'm Terry Borsamato Greenberg, and I am delighted to welcome you to our book buzz today. I'd like to introduce you to our school and library team. First up, Darby. Hi, I'm Darby Gwynn. Terry and I will be sharing July through December books with you from our sister companies, Holiday House, Peachtree, and Pixel and Ink. And Annie Rosenblatt is running our PowerPoint. Hi, Thanks everyone. so much, Annie. So now, everyone, sit back, relax, and enjoy the presentation. We're starting off with fiction picture books from Holiday House. Our first book is from six-time Poor Belpre award winner Juji Morales, told with a combination of powerful spare language and lush complex imagery that will remind you of dreamers. Bright Star is the story of a young fawn making her way through a border landscape teeming with flora and fauna native to the region. The book will be simultaneously published in Spanish as Lucero. As with dreamers, the book is filled with potent symbols and imagery, and Shushi explains these, as well as shares her experience researching wildlife at the borderlands in a concluding essay. Red is the third and final book in the sequence that began with Laura Vaccaro Seeker's Green and Blue. All three books deal with color as an expression of emotion. Red is the color of anger and pain but also the color of warmth, love, and empathy, all of which can be found in this tender story of a young fox who gets separated from the pack and the many challenges he faces before being reunited with his family. In I Say Please and Thank You, Lift the Flat Manners, Count Akkad honoree Rachel Isadora and the very successful Roby Roji have created a fun Lift the Flat book about these simple magic words. This is just right for the very youngest readers to start them on the road to good manners. In Unraveled by debut author artist Leanne Hatch, the more Cole plays with the baby blanket his mama made when he was born, the more it becomes unraveled. Cole decides it is time to give it up, but mama isn't quite ready and repurposes it into something different, a sweater, which makes Cole and his mama very happy. Let's Be Friends, Siamos Amigos, is the first of at least two books in our My Friend, Me Amigo series. Renee Coloto Lenez, a teacher in a bilingual kindergarten classroom, has crafted an ingenious story illustrated by Nomar Perez with kid-pleasing art that authentically and naturally uses conversation to introduce children to English and Spanish. The fun friendship story engages children with while simple words, short sentences, and a glossary reinforced learning. Everything Joe says in English, Jose says in Spanish. This is perfect for preschoolers, kindergartners, and first and second graders who are learning to speak or to read English and Spanish, a delightful reading experience for bilingual families. When the adorable green Marty is outed as a Martian, humans shun him until a friend helps him find a place of safety and acceptance at school. This is from Rachel Noble with illustrations by Zoe Abbott. The story's themes of inclusivity, spreading kindness, and building bridges were never more needed than today. Not Little is from debut author Maya Myers and Ezra Jack Keats New Illustrator Award winner, Hai Wan Young. Dot may be small, but she's definitely not little. And when a new kid who's even smaller than she is shows up at school, and is bullied by a bigger, meaner boy at the lunch table, Dot springs into action. And in doing so, she makes a new friend. In this rhythmic read aloud by acclaimed author Michael Emberley and Marie Louise Fitzpatrick, one of Ireland's most distinguished illustrators, a little girl walks into a diner by a train station with her family and announces to one and all, I can make a train noise. Her imagination transforms the coffee shop into a zooming train and her words clickety clack across the tracks and blare like a train horn, proving that all you need is an imagination to experience the thrill of a great train ride. This JLG gold standard selection is a true celebration of imaginative play. Newberry medalist Patricia McLaughlin and award-winning artist Chris Chabon join forces once again 
for a moving evocation of love and loss in When Grandfather Flew. Told from the point of view of a middle child, Emma, the poetic text describes her grandfather's intense love of birds and the special bond he had with her younger brother, Milo. You are a reader, you are a writer. It's two books in one. This inspires and encourages children who are learning to read and write. It's filled with ideas for both, as well as how to move on if you get stuck. A true celebration, no matter what reading or writing level you're at. In acclaimed graphic novelist, Tom Gall's first picture book for children, inspired by a bedtime story he made up for his daughters, a little wooden robot goes on a quest to find his missing sister for a memorable contemporary bedtime story. The Little Wooden Robot and the Log Princess is a JLG gold standard selection. The book explores supportive siblings in a fresh new fairy tale, and we're delighted to welcome the same New Yorker cover artist to our list. Based on her own childhood as the child of a Latinx mom and a dad from Appalachia, Elizabeth Lilly's Let Me Fix You a Plate is a delicious own voices tale of a great road trip to two families in rural, rural West Virginia and Florida and two distinct cultures that nevertheless share a common bond, food. Mighty Reader Makes a Great is the second book about the love of a beagle who's a friend to new readers everywhere. By pairing bright comic book style artwork with classroom approved reading strategies, Will Hillenbrand has created a reading superhero perfect for today's youngsters. It offers just the right tips to help them cope with school-related stress, such as test anxiety, for instance, in a panel format for comics lovers. Chinese Pipe Festival is a beautiful companion to Rich Lowe's earlier book, Chinese New Year Colors. Simple bilingual text helps teach children animal names in both English and Chinese. And little ones will learn that butterflies are a sign of love, Bees signify hard work and more through the very simple and accessible back matter. Paired with Rich Lowe's vibrant digital watercolors, the simple and practical introduction to Chinese animal names and symbolism is just irresistible. Author Bob Barner is back. Bob plays the ukulele and other stringed instruments and he visits schools to read his books and play music. His My Dog Has Fleas, a ukulele misadventure about a ukulele playing dog owner who sings about a group of sad flea-bitten dogs is a how-to music book in disguise. It's perfect for groups of kids to sing and play together. Techniques for playing the ukulele are woven into the narrative and the book even includes sheet music as well as an online video that will help readers get into the groove. It's a great music book that's perfect for kids who love animal characters. We're so proud to be celebrating 10 years of award-winning I Like to Read Books, the series for emerging readers based on the Fontes and Pinnell leveling program in levels A through G for the very newest readers. We've expanded to I Like to Read Comics this year, plus we now have some of the most popular I Like to Read books available in Spanish in our May Gustele year line. New this fall is I Hop the fourth I like to read book about a Latinx boy written and illustrated by Pura Bell Bray honoree, Joe Cepeda. Kindergarten readers will recognize this familiar character. Here are more of our new I like to read books in level C, D, and F from David McPhail, Lizzie Rockwell, and Caldecott medalist, Emily Arnold McCulley. Next up is our newly illustrated, newly launched list of I like to read comics. Perfect for kids who are challenged by reading or unengaged in it. The growing number of young comic fans and kids who love art. Our May Gustele year line will be expanding with six translations of some of our most popular I like to read titles, all available in paperback editions. And to help continue to meet the need for books in Spanish, we have Tommy DePaola's Cloud Book coming later in the year with the quicksand book and the popcorn book coming soon. We now move into our nonfiction list, including a few new picture books that take on STEM in an artistic way. Stitch by Stitch, Elizabeth Hobbs Keckley sews her way to freedom, 
by Connie Schofield Morrison and Elizabeth Zunon is about an amazing woman who was born into slavery and through hard work, determination, and talent became the most sought after seamstress in Civil War era Washington, DC. She made beautiful dresses for Mary Todd Lincoln and her work was admired by President Lincoln, whom you can see on your screen. I Want an Apple, How My Body Works is a clever and humor humorous introduction to body parts and their functions. This is from beloved author, David L. Harrison and the New York Times Best Illustrated Artist, David Catro. Such fun art. Charles Smith and Adele Rodriguez's song for Jimmy is epic in every way. A 56 page account of guitar legend, Jimi Hendrix's life in pulsing free verse and spectacular poster like art. In fact, the book's jacket as this fabulous poster on the reverse. Cybert medalist Candace Fleming tells the story of Boston Diane Isabella Stewart Gardner and the museum she created, as well as its infamous art heist in this droll nonfiction picture book, riotously illustrated by Caldecott medalist Matthew Cordell. You are absolutely going to love this one. Now, maybe you're struggling with writer's block. The story of a story is just the right book to encourage aspiring writers. Award-winning author Deborah Hopkinson and talented artist Hadley Hooper have created a simple, elegant picture book that will help writers find the key. Hint, it involves persistence. The story of a story follows a boy who is just about to give up hope when he sees a little chickadee collecting seeds outside his windows. He admires its concentration and commitment as it picks away one seed at a time, determined and unstoppable. The boy knows this is what it takes to create something special. So he comes back to his desk and writes just one word and then another. So beautiful. In Roxy Monroe's companion to dive in, follow true to size rainforest animals as they journey through a noisy, colorful ecosystem like no other on earth. As in Roxy's other books, all the creatures in anteaters, bats, and boas are rendered at life size, including a four page gatefold of an anteater. Over half the world's plant and animal species live in tropical rainforests, such as the Amazon. And Roxy's spectacular book includes fascinating creatures, a description of the four layers of the rainforest, plus an index, a map of rainforests worldwide, and a section on protecting rainforests. Budding conservationists will love immersing themselves in one of the most biodiverse places on the planet. Next up, we are delighted to continue bringing you new and updated editions of Gail Gibbons' popular nonfiction works. Here we have Giant Pandas and Elephants of Africa. And now we move on to chapter books. We have the fourth book in the After School Superstar series by Claudia Mills and Grace Song, which focuses on after school programs with recurring characters. This one is about Boogie's exuberant personality and how it helps him to excel at sign language camp. The book also includes an ASL sign language chart and information about sign language. This funny and heartwarming collaboration between Geisel Honor and Edgar Award-winning author Hill is a tribute to the love of a good pet and the joy found in new friendship. Each book in the Dear Beast series includes eight chapters and adorable full-color illustrations on every spread. Holiday House, we are expanding our graphic novels list. Hooray! The Noodleheads are back. Here they have book six in the award-winning series, Noodleheads Do the Impossible. In this funny graphic book by the guy who does the fly guy, Ted Arnold, and his friends, Martha Hamilton and Mitch Weiss, the Noodlehead brothers want to be famous. So they do the impossible. They walk all the way around the world. Salt Magic is an utterly unique historical graphic novel, fairy tale by Hope Larson with illustrations by Rebecca Mock, the team that brought us Compass South and Knife's Edge. When a mysterious woman puts a curse on the family, well, it will be up to 12-year-old Von Seal to set things right in an epic journey that will leave her changed forever. 
but along the way, she'll learn a lot about love and what it means to grow up. Here are just a few of the fabulous advanced quotes that have come in for the book, one of which is from Victoria Ying, author illustrator of Secret City of Secrets. The perfect alchemy of gorgeous illustration and richly imagined story. Cannot wait for this one. Our history of Western art and comics, prehistory to Renaissance, is a series that is sure to make art come alive. Readers can follow along with a hipster grandpa and his inquisitive children as they learn about artists who dare to break the mold. Book one hits shelves in July and part two follows in October. We're now moving on to novels for older readers. Middle graders are in for a real treat this fall. Beloved author Mary Hamato has written a truly unique series about a kid who's recruited to play interstellar soccer. In book one, Game On, Albert is abducted by alien xenons who want him to be their star striker. Though a series of startling developments occurs, it becomes apparent that winning the World Cup style tournament is crucial to the future of the planet Xenon and that someone or something is trying to murder Albert. This book is a thrilling read full of great sports action and high octane suspense. It also has a surprising poignancy as it tackles timely topics such as social, social justice in a unique way. Vial of Tears by Kristen Bashara is a sweeping own voices fantasy based on the rich and glittering mythology of ancient Lebanon. A cursed coin transport modern day, transports modern day sisters, Samira and Rima to the Phoenician underworld. To get home and to keep her sister safe, Sam will have to outwit beautiful shapeshifters, pose as a royal bride, and maybe kill the god of death himself. The Lost Language is the first ever novel in verse by acclaimed author Claudia Mills in which two best friends try to find a way to save an endangered language and their friendship. It is a beautiful read. Lisa Klein Ransom's trilogy that started with Finding Langston and Leaving Lyman will now be complete with Being Clem. The book opens with Clem's family receiving the devastating news that their father had been killed in the Port Chicago disaster in California. It follows the family as they try to cope with this emotional, psychological, and economic catastrophe. Clem, the joker of the trio of boys, becomes an even more lovable character in this book. Clem's quick sense of humor is an indispensable tool as he navigates challenges and figures out how to carry on his father's legacy while remaining true to himself. In Rachel Takes the Lead, the four friends that were introduced in Ellie Makes Her Move, the first book in the Spyglass Sisterhood series by Marilyn Kay, used the magical spyglass to help introverted Rachel. And now Tom the Van Wolf Zom is back. And so is the werewolf that bit him in this monstrously funny series about a boy who's dying to fit in. Created by Stephen Banks, an Emmy nominated writer for SpongeBob, The Adventures of Jimmy Neutron and CatDog, this hilarious series is illustrated by Mark Fearing with clever cartoon style art on every spread. Inspired, by Chinese mythology and history, The Dream Weavers is an historical folklore-inspired fantasy adventure from G.Z. Schmidt. Since their parents' strange disappearance several years ago, 12-year-old twins, Mei and Yoon, have been raised by their grandfather, who makes the best mooncakes around using a very secret ingredient. Now the siblings must journey through the city of ashes and visit the jade rabbit to save their beloved grandpa. As Jeezy writes in her author's note, this book is a letter to my Chinese roots. How much trouble can three kids and residents of a retirement community stir up? In Ruth Freeman's How to Save a Superhero, readers find out just that when one of the characters is a retired superhero being pursued by villains. The answer is you wouldn't believe how much. In J.D. in Five Dimensions, 
JD travels through the fourth dimension to complete special missions. But are these missions actually making the world a better place or are they carrying out someone else's agenda? The Investigation Bureau meets a rival for preteens in this brilliant girl powered book by Diane K. Salerni, author of Eleanor Alice and the Roosevelt Ghost that questions the limits of our universe and free will. In this follow-up to Out to Get You, author Josh Allen has 13 brilliant new stories that take the ordinary and turn it into the extraordinary. There's no blood, there's no gore, no monsters. Instead, there is hostile oatmeal. There are threatening jesters, a snowman that doesn't melt and porcelain dolls, dolls that aren't quite right. Accompanied by Sarah J. Coleman's eerie illustrations, this spine chilling collection is right in line with perennial spooky favorites like scary stories to tell in the dark and goosebumps. And only if you dare has a glow in the uh, dark cover. The Bear House by the award-winning Megan McIsaac is the first entry in a new middle grade fantasy series set in a gritty medieval world where the ruling houses are based on the constellations. This is a richly imagined and lightning fast fantasy series that our editor describes as Game of Thrones for kids. And now I'm turning this over to Darby. We are delighted to present the Peachtree upcoming fall list. And we're going to start off with two board books for the very youngest readers. Curious About Fish is the fourth in the new Discovering Nature board book series from Catherine and John Sill. And from award-winning author illustrator Susan Stockdale comes spectacular spots, Magnificas Manchas, a bilingual board book with engaging rhymes and bright, bold imagery. Both are perfect for the budding nature lover. Hey, A Colorful Mystery is the second book by Ezra Jack Keats new illustrator honor award-winning Kate Reed. In this story, a tiny pink fish looking to play accidentally scares a nearby fish, which then sends a rumor, starts a rumor that there is something very large, very scary, very threatening hiding out there in the ocean, and it only snowballs from there. Kids will learn about the variety of colors as well as sea creatures as readers get pulled into a fun mystery about a rumor spiraling out of control, which also ties into timely themes of discerning speculations and misinformation in a lighthearted way. The book also features the bold and vibrant collage artwork and entertaining story tension that Kate was known for in her debut book, One Fox. Speaking, well, Stanley's Library. This 10th Stanley picture book is an homage to libraries and all the work librarians do to help their community. As with the rest of the Stanley books, Stanley has a busy day at his job. This time as a librarian organizing shelves, taking his library van out to the park to help his friends find the perfect book, and then going back to the library to prepare for a special author event. Fans and friends of Stanley will recognize the familiar routine while seeing him in a new occupation with new vehicles, library carts, and a library van, and will find humorous details in the artwork, like an entire shelf dedicated to cheese books. Speaking of 10th books, I'm thrilled to present the 10th title in the award-winning About Habitat series, Tundras. Catherine Sill starts us off with a simple definition. Tundras are cold, dry areas with no trees, but there is plenty of life that thrives in this special environment. From pikas to arctic foxes to caribou and snowy owls, there's so much to explore in these detailed paintings by John Sill, revealing how diverse and colorful this chilly environment really can be. Amara's Farm is the start of the four book Where in the Garden series by Janae Brownwood and Samara Hardy, which follows a diverse cast of characters as they introduce a variety of seasonal produce in their different gardens. This first book follows Amara as she looks through her farm for pumpkins to prepare for an autumn potluck. Using inductive reasoning based on the characteristics of the fall plant, various fall plants that Amara comes across, the book is great for food identification, as well as showing the different parts of fruits and vegetables, while also teaching what produce grows in which seasons. 
Each story ends with a community meal and back matter, including a recipe, using the featured fruit or vegetable from the book. In this case, molasses pumpkin bread. Red truck, yellow truck. This rhyming bedtime read aloud by Michelle Robinson, illustrated by Jez Touye, is perfect for truck and dog lovers. Red truck, yellow truck, and their dog drivers start their busy day of work as they head to a construction site. But as they drive through the busy town, a snowy forest, and a cow-filled farm, they encounter other various trucks and side jobs with which they can help. The variety of verbs and the action-packed story keep the book moving at a rhythmic pace, while the vibrant colors, intricate townscapes, and adorable dog details throughout the book will have readers finding new elements of the story to enjoy and enjoy. When Lana Lynn hears about the new watchdog coming to the farm, she can't wait to teach him how to do his job. Annie, next slide. So when a canine with pointed teeth comes creeping out of the woods, Lana immediately assumes he's the new watchdog and begins his training. The new watchdog doesn't quite catch on to herding or staying up all night guarding the sheep, but Lana Lynn isn't deterred. Isn't deterred. Next slide. However, she has a creeping suspicion that something isn't quite right, and she must be brave in order to protect the other sheep. Author Rebecca Van Slyke has created a charmingly overconfident heroine in Lana Lynn, accented by Anka Sandu's adorable and delightfully funny illustrations. This is an ideal read aloud, full of good farm fun. The Littlest Yak is a rollicking story all about celebrating being just the way you are even if it's small, from debut author Lou Frazier. It follows Gertie, the littlest yak in the herd, who can't wait to grow up and be big like everyone else, but eventually learns that she's perfectly valuable just as she is. This entertaining rhyming story is beautifully complemented by humorous illustrations of expressive yaks in their wintry environment and has the feel of a new instant classic. We are delighted to introduce Boo Stew, a fractured fairy tale with a humorous twist from internationally known award-winning storyteller, Donna Washington, illustrated by Jeffrey Ebler, who illustrated Feast of Peas. Curly Locks loves to cook. However, the townsfolk of Toad Suck Swamp don't enjoy her bat wing brownies or cat hair cupcakes. But when three scares start terrorizing the town, looking for a good meal, Curly Locks knows that they won't be able to resist her special boo stew. This features a strong female protagonist with lots of courage and determination and is perfect for story times and reading aloud, especially around Halloween. Anne Booth and David Litchfield have created a gorgeous picture book about sadness and hope and the importance of making space for our emotions. It features a male protagonist, which is rare for picture books about emotion and sadness, and addresses the important topic of mental health, but in an approachable and child-friendly way. With poetic storytelling and dazzling illustrations, this gentle and empathetic picture book is an essential and poignant story that will help children to accept and understand their feelings. The fourth book in the Nina Sony Own Voices middle grade series comes out just in time for Halloween. Nina is planning to create an impressively scary haunted house in her basement so she can charge admission. But as usual, hijinks ensue for the distractible Nina Sony. Fun steam elements as well as Nina's Indian American heritage are woven into each story in the series. This year, we are celebrating the 25th anniversary of Fred Bowen's award-winning sports story middle grade series. Soccer Trophy Mystery which features a new mystery storyline, also focuses on girls in sports as the protagonists investigate what happened to a missing soccer trophy that was stolen over 40 years ago. As with the rest of the books in the series, Bowen weaves in a real sports story, this time about a World Cup trophy that was stolen and never recovered. In addition to providing fun sports action, this book is also great for character education, both on and off the field. In Now You Say Yes, we have the newest novel by Grammy award-winning storyteller and author Bill Harley. After her foster mother dies suddenly, 15-year-old Mari is determined not to go back into the foster care system. So she takes her younger stepbrother, Connor, 
who is autistic, and drives from LA to New England to see if their grandmother will take them in. On the way, with an important stop in Missouri to catch the solar eclipse, which Connor is obsessed with, Mari learns about the inner workings of her brother's mind and about her connections to him and to the world. This is a touching coming of age story about loss, grief, and an unforgettable road trip adventure filled with plenty of heart, humor, and music. Bill consulted with therapists in the foster care system, as well as nationally known scholar and expert in the autism spectrum disorder field to ensure that representation of his characters was accurate. Bill's own cross-country road trip during the 2017 solar eclipse also helped inspire the story. And our new YA for the season is the follow-up to Rebecca Elliott's Pretty Funny for a Girl. In Pretty Rude for a Girl, budding comedian Hala has started her own comedy YouTube channel. And when things in her life start going haywire, she decides to vent to her online audience until her friends and family discover her videos ranting about them, which causes even more drama in her already complicated life. This is an entertaining, binge-worthy read full of cringy moments, unforgettable characters, realistic relationships, and plenty of humor. Pixel and Inc., our series-only sister company for ages 3 to 13, launches, launched just one year ago with the middle-grade graphic novel Black Sand Beach by Richard Fairgrave. And we are delighted to bring you a brand new series for slightly younger readers by Richard and Lucy Campagnola. Cardboardia is for third to fifth graders in which four friends are transported through a cardboard box to a magical land where everything is made from paper or cardboard. Cardboardia is a fantastical and dangerous adventure that celebrates art and creativity. Carlton Crumple, Creature Catcher, Reptoids from Space, continues our wacky monsters and fast food series by David Fremont. When space creatures land on Earth, Carlton and the gang use their wits in a mini-mart to save the day. Enthusiasm for these adorable sisters and their tiny house life continue to grow. In the fifth Twig and Turtle book by Jennifer Richard Jacobson, it's time for teamwork as they tackle the highs and lows of starting their own business. Launching this summer, Trillium Sisters is a new chapter book series about three sisters with mysterious origins who discover that they have superpowers and use them to solve problems around them and protect their mountain home. Books one and two will pub this summer, and the third book will hit shelves in the fall. Our tween series, The Infamous Frankie Lord, continues with book two, Going Wild. In this book, Frankie is determined to take down the supplier who is illegally selling panthers, tigers, and more to rich families for their personal zoos. Thank you so much for joining us. And please be sure to visit us online and sign up for our e-newsletter so we can stay in touch throughout the year. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you, everyone. We look forward to seeing you at ALA in person very soon. Bye. Bye.